Hi, good afternoon. This is Mr. Cassidy, and today we'll be covering Lesson 1.3, a quick overview of what we covered in class for both days. So uh, with that said, let me go ahead and switch my screen a little bit so I can share the proper screen. There we are. All right, so uh, what we covered in class was the idea of collecting variable terms on one side of an equation. What that means is if we have a balance scale and we have x's on both sides. That's like having a paper bag on both sides. So let's say I've got two paper bags on this side. That's my paper bag drawing. And one gold coin. And then I have three paper bags on this side. And our goal is to find out how many gold coins are in each paper bag. Well, in order to solve the problem, we need to move or collect the paper bags on one side. And so that means if we want to remove the one paper bag here, we subtract one X here, we're going to have to subtract that X on this side. If we subtract another one, we subtract another one on this side so that we only have the X's on one side or the paper bags and the whole numbers on the other. That's our goal right now. And we're going to do so with addition or subtraction. Now, what we covered in class as well was the fact that if you want to, it's sometimes easier to solve when the variable has a positive coefficient. Keep that in mind when you're deciding which side to collect, because x can end up on the right, x can end up on the left. And what you don't want is your x on both sides. Um, and what you decide is whether to add or subtract and which side to collect the x's on. All right. So here's our example problem. We solved this in class, and I'll just give the quick rundown. The main step that's new is the very first step. I'm just going to have to, there it is. The very first step is when we collect the variables. I see that 7n is here and 5n is here. And it's usually easiest to move the smaller coefficient. So the smaller n is 5n. So I would subtract 5n from both sides. In this case, I draw a line and I'm going to total up my work. These are opposites. That's all that's left is 0n's there. It's nothing. Here, all that's left is a 6. On this side, 7 minus 5 is 2n. That's how many n's are left, minus 2. So that's our new first step. As needed, we simplify the equation by collecting the variables on one side using addition or subtraction. And we're always going to do the opposite. So the reason I subtracted 5n was because that was a positive 5n. If we needed to move a negative n term, we would add to it. Okay, from there, it's a two-step equation. We're going to collect our constant to the other side, and how we're going to do that is by putting its inverse. If it's 2n minus 2, we're going to add 2. Get 8 equals 2n. From here, we see that it's two groups of n, or 2 times n to undo multiplication. We divide, and we're left with n equals 4. There we are. Okay, so moving right on. Watch out for fatal flaws. This is a giant problem, and I'm going to cover the steps of it, but I'm not going to go into too much detail. So when we see a huge problem like this, we're going to start first by distributing. Simplify each side of the equal sign. So I'm not going to move anything. I'm not going to subtract a 2 on both sides. I'm not going to add anything. First, I want to simplify. I need to get this as simple as possible. So to do that, we will distribute on each side. It would take the negative 2 and multiply by each term, the 2, and remember to change this one. This is our big fatal flaw. A minus sign here means it's a negative 1 that is being distributed to each of these terms. Okay, so we get here and we're like, okay, are we done? Well, not quite. The next step is to collect like terms. We're still trying to simplify each side without changing anything. We're just trying to combine everything as simple as possible. Um, if it helps to change subtraction to adding a negative, that's fine. When we combine the like terms, we end up like this. 
And from here, we're now going to do the equation exactly as we use opposite operations to move the variables on one side and then whole numbers on the other. They aren't necessarily whole all the time, but in this case they are. Here I would add the 5x to do the opposite and move it to the left, giving us 6x. Here I would subtract the 6 on both sides, giving it negative 16. Final step is to solve. Well, we have 6 times x, so to undo it, I would divide both sides by 6. That leaves me with x is negative 16 over 6, and we're like, okay, we're done, right? Well, I would probably simplify. I do like fractions in simplest terms. It's okay for them to be improper fractions, but we would simplify to negative 8 over 3. That's the best answer we can give. Okay, so you could try. We tried this one a little bit in class. Um, go ahead and try this one for a second if you need to. It's on problem 4 on page 15 of your notebook. I'll run through the steps really briefly. 3 fourths times 48. It may help to write a fraction times a whole number as 48 over 1. And then remember to reduce. So 4 and 48 can be simplified to give us 12. 3 times 12 is 36. So our first term is going to be 36. Next, I've got 3 fourths times a negative 16x. I'll put negative 16x over 1 so I can use reducing. 3 fourths simplifies. And now I've got a 3 times a negative 4x. That would be a negative 12x here. On the right hand side, I'm going to do 4 times 4 and 4 times a 2x to get 16 plus 8x. Okay, now I notice, oh, my variable's on two sides. Well, I'm going to remove the smaller term since negative 12 is smaller. Um, and I like positive integers. I'm going to add 12x to each side. Okay, from there, I'm going to bring down what's left. I've only got 36 now equals 16 plus 20x. From here, I need to move my whole numbers. So how do I move this 16? Well, I do the opposite. It's a positive, so I'm going to subtract 16. And get... 20 is equal to 20x. To solve from there, I need to divide. I would divide both sides by 20 and get that x is just 1, the loneliest number. There we are. Okay, so what about weird problems? Here's the second half of lesson 1.3. We get some weird equations. You could try this one on your own if you want to experiment. I'm going to go ahead and first distribute just like I normally would. That gives me a negative 6x. Negative 2 times a minus 12 is going to be a plus 24 equals 24 minus 6x. Huh. You might be like, okay, let me keep solving. So I collect my like terms by doing a plus 6x here, plus 6x. And I'm starting to notice something weird's going on. These are opposites, so there's zero x's left. It's 24 equals, well, those are opposites. Those are the same. 24 equals 24. Well, I could subtract 24 from each side. And I would get 0 equals 0. What is going on? Ah! So uh, awfully frustrating. When you get something like 0 equals 0, it's like it may ask you, make you question your own sanity. What's happening here is we've got a scale that is identical. In fact, that's what we call it in math, the identity. Identical scales. So what that means is, as I was solving, I've, here's my paper bag. Here's like three gold coins. And the other side has just one paper bag and three gold coins. So I'm asking myself, how many gold coins are in the paper bag? And so I remove the paper bag. Let me go ahead and remove one paper bag there. And that means I've got to remove the paper bag there. But then I remove the gold coins. And now there's nothing left on the scales. Zero equals zero. I did exactly that on the scales. Well, what's going on here? 
Well, what's going on is since the two sides are identical, I can't figure out what's in the paper bag. It could be literally anything. It could be any number of gold coins. Um, so when we see that, that means I could have one gold coin, right? Four gold coins would balance with four gold coins. I could have two. I could have three. When you see an identical side that matches, both sides are not only equal, but they match. We know it's a problem. And what we know about that problem is that that means x can be anything. We say x equals all real numbers. Another way of writing that is infinite solutions. And if you want to learn how to write the cool R, you do a capital R, and then you do a line next to your capital R and just sort of move that top part over. It's a cool symbol. It means all real numbers. So um, what that means is x can be literally anything. And what we're looking for is identical. We could have probably stopped the problem right here when we saw that it was identical. It's like a warning signal should go off in your brain. We have a negative 6x, negative 6x. Those match. The x term matches, and that's always a problem sign. It's exactly the same symbol and same sign, same coefficient. Then we had the 24 also matching. Ding, ding, ding. We could have stopped right there and said all real numbers because these sides match. We can't tell what's in the x or what it's hiding. How about a problem like this? If we have negative 2 times here, let me go ahead and solve. So I get a negative 6x uh, plus 24 equals 6 minus 6x. Uh-oh. I noticed right away negative 6x on both sides. That should be your warning, danger. Oh, no. There's something going on here. Well, let me try to solve. Add the 6x. Add the 6x. That is 24 equals 6. And you're like, cool, 24 equals 6. Answer, chicken dinner, winner, winner. I, <laughs> I got the problem solved. 24 is 6, right? Well, some of you are like, wait, 24 can't be 6. 24 is not the same thing as 6. If I have 24 uh, pieces of bubble gum, it is not the same as having 6 pieces of bubble gum. These numbers are representing whole units. They can't be equal. They do not equal, in fact. And 24 will never be equal to 6. So in this case, we have no solution. We can write that like this. That is called, oop, sorry. It's called the null set or no solution. This problem can never be solved. Or well, the answer is no solution. But it can never be solved because no matter what you put in x, the scale was unbalanced to begin with. Here, here's what I mean by that. Um, if I have, a, here's my paper bag example, and one gold coin, and the other side of my scale has a paper bag and two gold coins. Well, notice this side is heavier than this side, no matter what, because I could take away the paper bag, but this side is heavier. So we started with the scale that was not equal. This side was weighing down. It was much lower. And this side was much higher because this side had more of the original units and the same number of paper bags. So when we see an equation, 3x plus 1 equals 3x plus 8, Again, warning sign is same coefficient for x. Problem is they aren't balanced. There's no way that these can be equal. So we write x equals no solution. And our answer is no solution. So you may be wondering, well, when do they have solutions? All this time we've been solving for x. When, are they sol when, when do they have solutions? Well, they have solutions whenever the x terms are different. So if I have a 2x on one side, 2x plus 1 equals 5x minus 8, as long as the coefficient is different, we can solve the problem. We will get a single number that always works for x. But anytime you see the coefficient is the same, you know you've got either no solution or infinite solution. 
infinite starts with the same letter I. Identity is infinite. And if you think about it, unbalanced means no solution. Because, yeah, there's no solution when something is unbalanced. Okay. Notice those start with I. That helps us. Okay. So here would be your notes. If you want to write it down, you can. Equations do not always have one solution. They only do if you have different numbers. 2x minus 3 equals 4x plus 1. The x coefficients, the number of x's on each side are different so we can solve. If it is an identity, 3x equals 3x, we can't figure out how much x is. It has all real numbers or infinite solutions. When you have the same coefficient, 3x plus 2 equals 3x plus 1, but the other value is different, well, these are going to weigh balance each other out, but the other numbers are not balanced, so there can be no solution. Uh, you write that like this. The empty set can also be written as this, x equals, we use brackets sometimes when there's more than one answer, an empty bracket means nothing, nada. So if you want, you can try these two. I'm going to move on. We've spent too long on this video already, so here are problems 11 through 14. Pause if you would like. Try them yourself if you need to check for understanding. And what you should always check here is are you going to get the same thing? So here are our answers. The first one is no solution. There's no possible way. The second is infinite solutions. The third, we get an answer. N is zero. The fourth, we get J is one. Okay. Well, I thank your minds and your hearts. Thanks for joining me today for a lesson 1.3 recap. Again, um, I hope you guys are doing well, and I wish you a good afternoon.